Okay, in this video we want to learn about floating point operations and variables, strings, and we're going to go into loops as well. So let's make a new console project. So go up to File, New, Project. Click up where it says Search Installed Templates and type in Console. Look on the right hand side for Visual C Sharp and look on the left for Console Application. Click on that, then let's name it Console Application 2 and hit Enter. <clears throat> As explained in the previous video, we need to make sure that the console window stays open. So we need to do a console.read line. And this will stop the console window from closing. Let's try it. So I'm going to start. And here the console window is open. It's waiting for us to hit return or enter. So I'll hit enter and go back to the integrated development environment. So what we want to do now is look at some a floating point operation. This means it's a number with a decimal point. It's called a float for floating point. Let's name it num1 and we'll call it, we'll say it's 1.1. Integers, int are, would just be this first part. That would be the integer part of it. The floating point part of it is the point 0.1 or one tenth. So what we want to do now is print it out. So we'll do our console.write line and then we'll just say num1 to print it out. Let's try to run it. Oh, there's something wrong. Let's see, it says double cannot be, okay. Let's make this a double. It's still a floating point, but it has more precision, more, it's, it can be longer than a uh, floating point. So let's try to, let's start, try to run that. And we can see it prints out the floating point variable. Okay, so that's, those are floats. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna delete this. Actually, let's leave it in. Go down here and create a string variable. I'll call it string str1. And strings are are a string and a series sequence of ASCII values or Unicode character alphanumeric codes. So we could say uh, we'll say awesome, awesome. That's a string. It's enclosed in double quotes. So it's a, that means it's a string, and we assign it to str1. Let's print it out now. Console dot right line str1 and then let's don't forget the semicolon at the end of these statements and then we'll start it and we see it prints awesome so the, the, that's a string variable let's say we wanted to compare this string variable with something like another string we could use an if statement inside of the parentheses we're going to put our condition and inside these braces, we're going to put the code to execute. Let's try, let's compare, let's see, string one, and we're going to see if it's equal to equals uh, awesome two. Of course, it's not equal to awesome two. So let's put in our parentheses. And we're going to print out console.write line. It was awesome two. And we'll we'll go to the end and put a semicolon. We'll we'll go ahead and run it. And it was awesome too. Doesn't print out because right here we were checking does string one this variable equal awesome two? Now let's change it. Let's change awesome, the string to have a two in it now. Now if we run it, it does print out. It was awesome too. So those are string variables, and that's how you can compare string variables with the dot equals method. This string, this equals method returns a boolean, a true or false, depending on how it evaluates. Okay, let's go into some loops. So I'm just going to delete all this. Let's try a while loop. So we're going to have a counter. So we'll say int count becomes 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this, this while and then a set of parentheses. This while is going to ex while while this uh, boolean expression is true, it's going to execute this loop. It's going to loop, keep looping, and when it, it's going to when it gets to the bottom, it goes back up to the top and it tests that boolean statement. And if it's false, then it exits to the next line. If it's true, then it executes the body of the loop again. So we want to say, let's say count is less than or equal to. Five. So it's as long as so as long as count is less than or equal to five, it's going to keep looping. 
And what we need to do is at the bottom we need to say count equals count plus one. So each time it's going to get to the bottom of the loop, it's going to add one on to count and reassign it to count. So the first time count's going to be one. So one is less than or equal to five. Well, yeah, that's true. So it's going to come down here. It's going to increment count by one. So count becomes two. Then it loops back up and it does the test again. So two is less than or equal to five. That's true. So it comes back down until this becomes five or six. Once this becomes six, it comes back up and it says, is six less than or equal to five? No, it's not. So it jumps out to this last statement right here. So let's put in a console right, uh, right line statement so we can see what uh, the count is going to be. So we're just going to say count semicolon. Let's run it. And it let's let's do right line. So it prints them each count on a different line. See this this loop looped. It started at one and once it got to five, it printed out the five and five plus one is six. Went back up to the top, tested it. Six is not less than or equal to five. So it jumps out and it goes to the read line and waits for us to hit enter. Okay, so that's the while loop. So you just want to, we'll leave, we'll leave the logic here so you can refer back to it. Give ourselves some space. I want to show you one thing about string concatenation. String concatenation. This is where we are going to join strings together. So let's say we say uh, console.write line. Well, we can say, uh, Awesome dude. And if you notice, those are two string objects, or two strings, and the plus sign, instead of doing addition, it concatenates and it puts them together. So now this is going to print awesome dude. Let's try it. See, it prints awesome space dude. That's because I put a space in here after the awesome and it, it put them together they, they're one right after another so uh, you can also do this with uh, in any just about any type let's write let's do it right here let's say uh, count is and then we're gonna take that count string variable and concatenate it with the integer count it's not really a plus sign it's not really an addition it's just a concat putting them one after another. Let's see what this prints out then. So what it did is it took the count through each time through the loop and took the count is and just appended the count onto it and then printed it out. Okay. Let's go over I hardly ever use anything other than they're called for loops, but the while loops can be handy. There's do while loops which we might get into later. Let's print out some some space console dot right line and this slash n is a character it means new line so after the awesome dude we're gonna print out like a few we're gonna go to the next line a few times four times so we have some space okay I'm gonna, just gonna type this out four so what we have here is so these are semicolons the first thing you're going to do is the initialization. So we're going to take, we're going to create a new variable called index. Or let's call it, yeah, let's call it index. And we're going to set it equal to our starting value. We're going to index is going to be, let's say one, for now. That's what goes in the first part of the for loop. First, before the semicolon. Then the middle part of the for loop, we have our condition, just like we had up here. We had count less than or equal to five. Now we're going to say index less than or equal to 5. So our index equals 1 is just like our int count 1 before the while. And then our index is less than or equal to 5 is just like this while loops less than or equal to 5. And then over here, we finally we have count becomes count plus 1. So let's put that in. Count becomes count plus 1. And this loop right here is going to do everything that the while loop did except its statements for the execution of the for loop, its, its initialization of the variable, its condition, and its increment 
increment uh, statement are all in the top of the loop. So what we can do now is say console dot write line, and we can print out index. It's just going to print again the numbers from one to five. So let's try that. I guess I did something wrong. Let's see. Oh, and let's see. Oh, instead of count, it should be index. Sorry about that. It should be index because that's the in index for you. That's the variable we're using over here. So let's go ahead and run this. And we didn't. Let's see. In we need to let's try this again. Okay, count is okay. Here it is. This for loop right here printed out the numbers one through five. Start index started at one. Then it was it tested is index less than or equal to five. Well, one is less than or equal to five, so that's true. So go down and execute this. Print out one, which index is. Come back up index increment index by one, so it's two now. Check it. Two is less than or equal to five. That's true. So we come down and print out two. Let's try to uh, concatenate a uh, little description. So we're going to make a string. I'm going to say index equals, and then use a concatenation plus operator. Let's see what that print out prints out then. Okay, so it just says it just prints out index equals one, index equals two, index equals three, until index equals five, and then when this condition is no longer true because index becomes six and it breaks out of the loop. So those are basically the loops that I use most of the time. In the next section, I think we're going to get into some more advanced stuff. But uh, thanks for listening.